All right, guys, welcome in. We got the first week of the NFL preseason. Going to be doing the DFS video for you guys. Players to watch. It's just kind of players that caught my eye. Um, are either getting some hype in camp or they're just kind of players that are playing for a roster spot. Um, it's, it's kind of just all things that I'm going to be looking at kind of this week in targeting. You might be asking yourself, hey, why should I be playing preseason DFS? Well, actually, if you're watching this video, you're most likely intrigued to be <laughs> playing preseason DFS and watching it, but I just want to touch on some things that happened last year that I kind of noticed throughout preseason. First, I want to start out with the Eagles. Last year, if you watched our preseason DFS coverage, you could tell that we really liked the Eagles, and kind of by week three of the preseason, they became our top five team. They're one of our favorite teams, and then by regular season, like week three, they're our Super Bowl favorite, so that's just kind of one thing. Another thing was kind of the New England Patriots. Watching preseason last year, you could tell that their defense really kind of sucked at the start of the year, and we were really able to target them. Um, the Chiefs against the Patriots in Week 1 was able to capitalize on Kareem Hunt and Tyreek Hill that week, so that was another really good week. And just kind of sort of other things that we noticed, you know, you follow preseason DFS, you're able to tell that Andrew Luck is kind of more injured than uh, what some people led on to believe last year, so that was another reason. And then kind of just like the whole Tennessee Titans offense, they were getting a lot of hype last offseason. Then kind of just watching the preseason last year, you could tell that they just weren't in that good of form or chemistry-wise. Um, but enough of that. Let's get into this week's preseason DFS Week 1 takes. All right, going to start off here with the Carolina Panthers versus the Buffalo Bills. For the Panthers, there isn't that much that I like. Uh, Garrett Gilbert should be getting a lot of work, um, especially in the second half. He might be seeing a full half of the game, so I don't really mind that. Ian Thomas is a guy um, at tight end that they really like a lot. Um, Greg Olson, he's probably retiring next year, maybe the year after that, who, who knows. But they want to see what they got in him. I think he is going to be one of the top tight end plays this week. Not going to have that many tight end plays actually this whole week. Um, but getting to the Buffalo Bills, I think Josh Allen is going to be a really good play. He's kind of got a lot of chemistry with the third unit. He's pretty much exclusively been playing with the third unit, and so I think he'll get a full half of work in the second half. Um, he's going to be throwing it to someone like Malachi Dupree. I really like him. Last year, um, he slipped to the seventh round with the Packers just because of off-the-field issues. Um, he's been having a really solid camp. It seems like Josh Allen's been hitting him with a lot of passes. I think they have some really good uh, chemistry. Um, then at running back, it's either going to be Keith Ford or Marquise or Marcus Murphy. I like them both. Um, the Bills are the team that have run the ball the sixth most um, in the past two years in the preseason. I think Keith Ford has a little bit more talent. I think he'll probably get around nine touches, which really isn't bad for preseason DFS. All right, getting into the Bears versus the Cincinnati Bengals. Did we not kill it with the Bears last week? I mean, that was spectacular. Told you Tyler Bray was the absolute lock play. Told you Javon Wims was going to be another lock play for you. And then, obviously, the strategy last week was to play the defenses. So last week was a really good week. Also had Tanner Gentry. I mean, that was just great. It was a really good start of the week. Killed the Hall of Fame game. Let's get back into it with the Bears. I think we can really target them again. Going to be playing Tyler Bray again. Um, the team only has three QBs, and he threw the ball 34 times last week. So I think there's going to be more of the same with that with him. Um, getting some running back, Tyquan Mizzle. He looked really good, unlike Ryan Nall, their other back. They only carry five running backs. Ryan Nall looked like he made my dreams of being in the NFL still real. That's how bad he looked. Or I'm just that good. You decide. Um, but Tyquan Mizzle, I do like him. He catches the ball at the backfield. I think he's another back that could get about eight or nine touches. Maybe he catches three passes. Wouldn't be too bad for PPR. Then getting to receiver, like I said, I do really like Javon Wims. Uh, I think he could eventually be the Bears receiver number two. And then the other receiver, Anthony Miller, he'd be their slot receiver. I do really like those two. I think Tanner Gentry also could be a nice little tournament play. Um, he's more of a deep ball option like you saw last week. And then tight end, Adam Shaheen. Sure, he didn't get that much work in the passing game last week, but Deion Sims, he's inactive. And also, so is Joshua Bellamy. I forgot to mention that in the receivers. So I do, do not mind Adam Shaheen. He can go up and get the ball. All right, time to get into the Bucks versus the Dolphins. Going to start off with quarterback Ryan Griffin for the Bucks. Um, they seem to like him. I mean, if you watch Hard Knocks last year, they are really pumped up about having him. It's kind of curious, though, with the situation because Jameis Winston – 
He's been playing with the third unit, obviously because he's suspended. So maybe Winston plays with the third unit, and that's a nice edge you can gain by playing Winston. That's going to be kind of a game time decision, see what the news is there. But Ryan Griffin could be an all right play. So for running back, it's kind of hard to imagine the Bucks playing like Peyton Barber or, and Charles Sims. Also another running back, Sean Wilson, is out. So that kind of makes me want to go with Dare Agumbawale. It's a little bit of a homer, homer helmet pick. If you watched us last year, you know what the homer helmet pick is. I'm from Wisconsin, so obviously Dare Agumbawale is a former Wisconsin RB. But he's kind of the prototypical running back that the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are looking for. He's a small, kind of quick back, can catch the ball in the backfield. And then, obviously, Ronald Jones, the, the second, is going to be not a bad play either. Um, Payton Barber is currently the RB1 because Ronald Jones cannot do well in pass blocking downs. He's got to work on that. So I think this will be a nice opportunity to showcase his abilities in that department. Getting to receivers, though, I like Irv Phillips probably the most out of any of them. He seems like kind of a little bit of a poor man's Anthony Miller. He's a little bit smaller, but he's just as good of a playmaker, has just as good route running as well. All right, touching on the Dolphins now. Uh, it's going to be difficult to see kind of who to play for quarterback for them. Kind of more of a stay away, it seems like. If you do want to stack it, though, there is an option, too. You could stack Bryce Petty with Mike Gis Gasecki. I almost messed that up there. I did not. Leante Coru. I love Leante Coru. He just needs to get it all together. He does have the playmaking ability, and he has done really well in the preseason before. I do really like him. Then you got Isaiah Ford, who's kind of the biggest competition for Carew to make the roster. So whichever one you want to play, go ahead and play him. I think Carew's a little bit safer. Ford's more of a big play guy. All right, let's get into the New York Jets versus the Cleveland Browns. So starting out with the ooh, New York Jets. No, the New York Giants. That's what it is. Come on now. Now I'm going to mess this name up at quarterback Kyle Lulita. Is that right, guys? I don't know. Comment in the comment section. I didn't get that one right. I know it. But he's expected to play a ton in tonight's game and Thursday night's action. He hasn't looked horrible in preseason so far in training camp, but he hasn't looked great. I don't mind the play. Robert Martin's also a guy that should be seeing a ton of playing time for the running back position. I really do like his vision. He kind of lacks the burst, but he really does have some good vision. Um, for receiver, you could go with Amba Etatawo. I did get that one right. I know I got that one right. That's right. He's big, fast. He's a big playmaker. I like him a lot. He's had a strong camp. He has really good hands. I'm going to be kind of getting some pretty good ownership to him. You could also go with Marcus Bundy and Roger Lewis Jr. All, I mean, Roger Lewis Jr. looks pretty good on film as well. Travis Rudolph, their other receiver, he's kind of a little bit banged up. Might be a stay away. Getting to the Cleveland Browns here. Baker Midfield, you kind of want to play him. I think he's going to be playing a lot. And you could also go with running back Matthew Days. He played well in last preseason. All right, let's get into the Eagles versus the Steelers. I'm going to start off with Carson Wentz and Foles. They're not really expected to play at all. So that makes me want to go with the two other quarterbacks that they have. Nate Sunfeld actually had a really good preseason last year. He's looked pretty good again this year so far in camp. I mean, last year, if you remember the Philadelphia Eagles, we had to suffer through Matt McGloin. <laughs> he did not look good last year. Nate Sunfeld is a guy that did look good, and they're going to give that quarterback that many passing attempts like they did with McGloin last year. I think he could be in for a nice day. Joe Callahan's the fourth receiver on the depth chart. He didn't look bad for the Packers either last year. I think I'm going to go with Sunfeld, though, over him. Um, for tight end, uh, Dallas Goddard, he's a, he's pretty much the guy that they brought in to replace Trey Burton, who's now playing with the Bears. And it kind of, wouldn't you know it, he kind of looks like the exact same player as Trey Burton. So I do like that. He's got to work on his blocking a little bit. Um, for running back, we would go with Danielle Plumfrey. Um, he's kind of looking for a spot after Corey Clement came in and took his last year. Kind of got a little banged up last year. Um, Sproles, he's going to be going into that Sproles role. So let's see if he can win that spot. And then receivers, I'm just going to go with Bryce Traggs and Greg Ward Jr. They're two guys I liked last year, and I think they can pop for you again this year. All right, time to get into the Steelers, though. I do really like Mason Rudolph for a play. Um, he's QB4. Uh, he's kind of going against Joshua Dobbs for the QB3 spot. And Dobbs is not a guy. I don't mind him either as a play. But I think I'm going to go with Mason Rudolph. He was one of my favorite quarterbacks coming out of this year's draft class. And Big Ben is not expected to play. So you're maybe looking at a whole half for him. 
Um, and then James Washington, he's a receiver that has been receiving a lot of hype. And then just in regular fantasy football season, I'm kind of weary about Juju Smith-Schuster because of James Washington. I think James Washington is an incredible talent. I hope hopefully he can showcase that in tonight's game. Um, getting to running back here, Javarion Franklin. He's a big back. He's a pretty good pass blocker as well. Um, but he's more of a goal line back. Um, so I don't mind him. You could also go with Jalen Samuels, kind of see what he does. He's trying to show out tonight, so we can see what he brings to the table. Then Bucky Hodges, at tight end. He was a Viking for the Minnesota Vikings last year that they really hyped up. He's a guy that can go up and get it. All right, let's touch on the New Orleans Saints versus Jacksonville Jaguars. This is kind of a game that I think you can target a little bit. It's kind of a little bit more predictable. Tyson Hill is the quarterback that I'm playing in this game for the Saints. He's a guy that can run the ball. He's looked pretty good when he's played. and he, you know, He just makes things happen on his feet, and I think that's kind of what you want to target when you're playing preseason DFS. Um, another play that I like is going to be running back Boston Scott. Um, Vereen, Kamara, Ingram, they all shouldn't really see the field, so I think that's going to make... A lot of playing time open for Boston Scott here. Um, he's going to have chances to prove his worth. He's been getting a lot of hype in camp, so let's see what he's got. Then there's actually a lot of receivers that I do like, so that's what makes it hard. It's going to be more of a stack tournament option here. Traquan Smith, he's been really having a really great camp. They're really hyping him up. Uh, Keith Kirkwood's kind of the same thing. He's more just been solid and consistent. Hasn't really stood out that much in a good or bad way. He's just been consistent. And then Tommy Lee Lewis... He's been a guy that's really done well in the preseason before. Same can be said about the receiver, Austin Carr. So I like those all. Then Dan Arnold, tight end. <laughs> a little bit of a homer helmet pick here again. UW Platteville star. He caught 16 touchdowns last year. And he had over 1,100 receiving yards last year at UW Platteville. So I don't mind him. He's been getting a lot of hype out of camp as well. And a week where it's hard to predict which tight ends are going to do well, you got to take chances. And this is one that I'm going to be taking. For the Jaguars, Cody Kessler and Tanner Lee. Tanner Lee has looked really bad, but he's supposed to play a lot. You can see Cody Kessler's going to be a play. They're only carrying three quarterbacks, so that's why I think Tanner Lee's going to be an option. He just looks so bad in training camp so far. I do really like Tim Cook. I think he's going to be like my fourth highest owned running back. Um, Grant, Yeldon, Fournette, they really shouldn't see that much playing time. And then DJ Clark for the receivers. He's been getting a lot of hype, so I do like him as well. All right, let's get into the Patriots versus the Redskins. Let's see who I like here. That's going to be the quarterback, Danny Atlin. Atlin? Sorry. Um, he might play the whole game. Patriots aren't going to play Tom Brady. Uh, Brian Hoyer might see, you know, a solid quarter and a half. So he might not be a bad option going against backups. You could see him playing well. Atlin should get the most playing time, though, out of all those quarterbacks. So I do really like him. Ralph Webb, the running back. He should see a whole second half of action. While people in preseason DFS are going to be concentrating on Jeremy Hill versus Mike Gillisley, I'm going to be trying, concentrating on Webb. He should see, like I said, the whole second half of the game. And if you know the Patriots in the preseason, they do like to try to establish the run game. Um, for receivers, Braxton Berrios, I do really like, and Riley McCarron. They're both kind of competing for that wide receiver spot. If I had to go with one of them, it would be Berrios a little bit. Paul Turner is a guy that played really well last year for the Eagles, and maybe he makes a big play happen. I could kind of see it. Then I just got to throw in my boy Jacob Hollister from last year. I'm not going to be playing him. He's a stud, though. If he does well, I kind of hinted at it. Uh, the tight end match I'm going to be going with is going to be Ryan Izzo. He's trying to fill in, trying to get that fourth receiver or fourth tight end spot. He's been getting some hype out of camp, and Atlin and him have been actually playing pretty well together, so I don't mind that. Getting to the Redskins, the quarterback that I'm going to be playing is going to be Kevin Hogan. Um, he's done pretty well when I played him, so maybe I can keep that streak up. Um, don't mind him. Um, getting to running backs here, um, Martez Carter. He's a guy that can catch the ball in the backfield. Um, I can really see him getting seven DK points, which, as you know, that's really not that bad for preseason DFS. He's kind of going to be the guy that they could have fill in for Chris Thompson in that Chris Thompson role. Um, a receiver that's been getting a lot of hype is Mr. Irrelevant, Trey Quinn. Um, he should see plenty of run tonight in tonight's game, so not too bad of an option. All right, let's get into the Ravens versus the Rams. Um, Ravens are kind of a letdown. I don't really know what they're going to do with their quarterback spot. 
You could target the running backs again, Mark Thompson and Gus Edwards. If I had to go with one of them, it'd be Gus Edwards. He looked good last week. Um, and then for receiver, you could go with Grant. Uh, Tim White's a little bit banged up, so he should be seeing more run, especially in the return game, so maybe he breaks the touchdown. You could definitely play the Ravens on defense. Um, for the Rams, um, I like Steven Mitchell, the receiver. On paper, he looks like he should be an NFL receiver. Let's see if he can get done on the field. Uh, Josh Reynolds is a guy that I still believe in. I think he should see plenty of snaps tonight, so hopefully his abilities can lead to points. And then for a quarterback... <clears throat> Brandon Allen or Luis Perez. I really like Brandon Allen last year. He's the guy that won me a ton of money, him and D.D. Westbrook and Keelan Cole. So I think I'm going to go dip back into the well. Um, Luis Perez has actually had a decent camp, but I think Brandon Allen's abilities are going to separate him from Perez for tonight's play. All right, let's get into the Packers versus the Tennessee Titans. Um, for the Green Bay Packers... I'm not really sure what to think of for the quarterback situation. It could go with Brett Hundley or Deshaun Kaiser. They're going to be battling for that QB2 spot. They sh should be seeing some playing time. I don't have a really good feel for that, though, so I'm not going to be targeting them. For receivers, you could go with uh, Marquise Valdez-Scanton. Um, Scatlin, I don't mind him. All eyes are going to be on Jerron, Jamon Moore. Um, so I think Scatlin has a little bit more breakaway speed, and he could be a big play receiver for tonight's game. Um, Jake Kumaro. A little bit more of a homer helmet again for the third straight time on this video. But this could be the last time he plays in the NFL this preseason. So maybe he shows out and can make the team again, maybe the practice squad. For running back, Aaron Jones, Devontae Mays are injured. Um, Ty Montgomery and Jamal Williams should not be playing. So Joel, uh, I can't say the name. I'm sorry, guys. Joel B, he's going to be my lock play. I should know his name if he's going to be my lock play, but I'm going to be locking him in tonight. He should just be seeing a ton of snaps, so I do like him as a play. Um, for tight end, is a former quarterback um, for Indiana State, turned receiver. Now he is a 6'5", 237 pass catching tight end with a little bit of speed. That's going to be Robert Tanyan. I do not mind him. Getting to the Tennessee Titans, Luke Folk. Uh, I like him playing tonight. You know, the uh, Titans are only carrying three quarterbacks. Blaine Gabbert is a solid second string quarterback. Might not get a ton of runs, so I do like him. Um, the other two plays on this list, I'm not too high on. You could maybe play them if you want to. All right, so let's touch on the Texans versus the Chiefs. Not really too hyped about this game. Not too much to really be targeting. I guess if you want to play from this game, I'll give you running back Terry Swanson. Um, that, I mean, I really don't know what to say about this game. There wasn't that much that I like. Um, so, yeah, that's really the only play I'm going to go with. Tavon Coleman, I, I mean, he does have good film, um, but he didn't really do much in college. So I'm kind of just going to be avoiding this game. Um, same could be said about the next game here, San Francisco um, versus Dallas. Um Moster and Williams, they should be splitting carries. Uh, they look good, so, I mean, maybe they get a touchdown. It's just kind of a little bit harder to predict here. Um, the play that I do like the most is going to be Dante Pettis. Obviously, he's just been getting a lot of hype out of preseason. Probably the most hype out of any rookie receiver. I do really like him. Um, Trent Taylor is a little bit banged up, so that should lead to Pettis getting some more work. He is working in the return game as well, so I don't mind that. Um but, yeah, I mean, that's just kind of going to be a little stay away for San Francisco-wise. Uh, I do really like the Dallas Cowboys, though. Going to be targeting Bo Scarborough. He's, you know, a rookie running back with a lot to prove. I do not mind him. Jordan Chun, he's a big goal line back. Um, he actually has decent hands as well. He had 46 touchdowns in college. He had about 11 last year. And they, and they were, those were just mostly all inside the five. So maybe they, you know, get him in there, punch it in there for a touchdown. Lance Lenore, he is my dark horse to be the wide receiver one for the Dallas Cowboys by the end of the season, midseason. Um, you see Michael Gallup getting a ton of hype right now. And he's kind of just like a younger version of Alan Hearns. He's a lot worse route runner than Lance here. I mean, Lance has tremendous footwork. His route running is really good. He's got good quick feet. I mean, I just like him a lot more than Gallup so far, and Gallup's just been getting a ton of hype. You can play them both, actually, though. I don't mind that. Um, but let's get into the last game of the slate here. Indianapolis Colts versus Seattle Seahawks. Now, this is a game that I do like. Um, Andrew Lux expected to play a quarter, um, which I think Jacoby Brissett is as well. You could play both of them. I think Andrew Lux is going to um, have a ton of ownership, though, now because of that. So, 
maybe you want to fade him, but you could definitely do an easy stack here with KJ Brent. He's been getting a lot of hype out of um, Colts camp, but I really like his style of play. He's one of my favorite receivers on this slate. You could also go with Deion Kane. He's also had a really good camp. He's been a very consistent receiver for them so far in camp. And obviously running back Jordan Wilkins, he's just been getting a ton of hype out of camp. He's looking to be the RB1 for the Colts, and I think he can do it. I do like Jordan Wilkins season long, but let's see what he has tonight. Let's see what he can do. Against the Seahawks here. I don't like them as much as the Colts, so it's going to be more of a Colts stack. Um, for receivers, you don't really know which one's going to pop tonight, but you know one of them's going to be. Um, a lot of their receivers are banged up. Obviously, Doug Baldwin, 